Welcome back. In the last video, I showed you a few of the tools, the essentials, uh, things that you need and things that you might want to consider. Uh, and I gave you a brief overview of the uh, loading dies, but it's essential that you know exactly how they work and what the, what the purpose for each of the dies is uh, in exact terms so that you know what to, uh, what to do with them and how to avoid problems. I see an awful lot of uh, threads online with people writing in, uh, having, asking for help, asking for uh, advice about what to do because the case got stuck, uh, because they don't they don't have uh, they don't have smooth cases, uh, their cases are buckling. I see people even doing uh, things such as grinding dies and uh, reshaping the uh, different parts and everything. Uh, Please. Uh, the most important thing is to understand that the manufacturers, uh, no, matter, no matter which die manufacturer it is, uh, they are all producing extremely good equipment. I'll be demonstrating the uh, lead dies. This is what I have now. I don't have a collection of dies. I've, I've sold all my other brands. And, but I, every, every die essentially does the same thing. The work that it performs is the same across the board from one company to the other. Now how they arrive at that is an entirely different matter. Um, some, of the, some of the dies uh, use common methods uh, in order to achieve the same end and in, in the case of Lee, uh, he takes a slightly di different approach with uh, certain equipment. So let's take a look. Now this is a standard two die set for metallic rifle cartridges, uh, bottleneck cartridges in particular. Not all rifle cartridges uh, would be sized and treated the same. Some, because they're straight wall, uh, they'd be treated like handgun cartridges with, uh, with straight walls such as your 38 Special 45 ACP and things like that. But a bottleneck cartridge is, uh, as the name implies, it has a narrow uh, neck at the top which is of a different diameter than the, bo the case body. So. How these work is, is, first of all, you have to understand what happens to a case upon firing. The, after a case is fired, uh, the brass expands to fit the walls of the chamber. The uh, case neck expands to release the bullet, and it also uh, fits the uh, wall of the chamber. The case is then uh, not ready to accept a new uh, a new bullet because the bullet would just simply drop into place and fall into the case. There is a one thousandth of an inch grasp on a bullet. Uh, that's, the, that's the appropriate amount of squeeze that the case neck exerts on the bullet is one thousandth of an inch. It can't be anything more than that because uh, the bullet will simply not enter the case and there is a slight bevel on all bullets. They're not, they're not uh, sharp at the uh, bottom edge. As you can see right here, they even though they're a, even though they are a flat a flat bottom a bullet, uh, you can see there's a slight bevel to it, and that's to ease uh, insertion. And the one thousandth of an inch is enough to provide enough bullet grasp to prevent uh, slippage. But if you had anything more than that, it would collapse the case, and it simply wouldn't enter. Anything less than that wouldn't be enough uh, bullet squeeze. So, if you understand that, then you understand that you can never alter uh, the diameter of uh, the expander button. This is a uh, full-length resizing die for a 243 Winchester. Um, I've loosened it up and I've, so that you can uh, see the internal components. I'll take them apart. But it basically consists of the die body. There is a uh, lock screw, which is intended to hold it fast in the uh, loading press. A most dies will have someplace a vent hole, and uh, that vent hole is very important to release air as the, as the case is being inserted into the uh, die under pressure so that uh, it basically can escape. Otherwise, you'd have a, you'd have a, a serious uh, problem and you wouldn't be able to get the case in there. So there's a vent hole. And by the way, when you get a set of dies, always uh, clean out that vent hole. Take the, take the die uh, carefully and wash it out with, um, wash it out with mineral spirits. Uh, clean that vent hole with a uh, pipe cleaner and make sure that there's no debris. Because once in a while, now, when, I, when I've gotten Lee dies, they're always exceptionally clean. That's one of the reasons why I like them. I know that they do a good job 
uh, with the finished product and they don't leave, they generally don't leave any uh, metal shavings behind. Even they do on occasion. I've, I've found some in some corners, but they do a far better job of uh, finishing up before they package them. Now, uh, there's inside the uh, full length sizing die is a replication of the exact dimensions of a chamber, but a little bit smaller. In other words, uh, your cartridge case has to be able to fit inside the chamber. So therefore, uh, they know the, the manufacturer of the die knows the exact dimensions of specified for a uh, 243 Winchester chamber and therefore uh, correspondingly, uh, correspondingly makes a uh, chamber in this die which is a, a little bit smaller in order to uh, allow the cartridge case to uh, go into the chamber of the rifle. So it basically sizes it down a little bit more than necessary and it maintains as I said the um, the correct dimensions to hold the bullet in. Now there are variations there are variations uh, in the in the production of brass cases. The differences in uh, brass thickness at the at the case mouth can be uh, significant. They can be one or two thousandths or even more in thickness. Uh, the the space between the uh, seated bullet, the, the clearance between a case which has a seated bullet and one which uh, is allowed to expand to release that bullet uh, can vary uh, significantly uh, from, from rifle to rifle and from cartridge case to cartridge case. This is where most of the slop occurs, in other words, inside the chamber, and this is why uh, it's difficult to maintain a concentric positioning of the bullet down the middle of the barrel. And all these things we'll cover in depth as we get into more advanced reloading. But suffice to say, you have to have uh, you have to have enough clearance for that case to expand and allow the bullets release. Now, one of the problems that occurs is that during the sizing process, this this die during the sizing process closes that case down more than is necessary. But then after it does that, in other words, it closes it down several thousandths of an inch more than is necessary. But then immediately after that the expander rod, or in the case of many companies, <clears throat> this is an expander which is uh, tapered, which is one of the reasons why I prefer uh, lead dies over others. Not to mention the fact they're made in the United States of America, right here in, right, right here in our own country and not abroad in China. Uh, but one of, the, one of the critical things is that their uh, expander is not just a button which tends to drag with uh, much friction through the uh, case mouth as it's expanded. This one here, as it's expanded, uh, as, it, as it's withdrawn, it pulls it back through uh, and, and makes sure that that uh, case neck inside is exactly the right dimension of the bullet. Now I mentioned that there's a one thousandth of an inch clearance, so let's verify that. If we take a 243 if we take a 243 bullet and measure the dimensions, you'll see right there. And if you if you understand how you read this, uh, right here, there's the the first the first digit is right here is two, and then after that you go up here to the dial and there's a four three, a little bit over 43. Now there's a reason for that because Sierra tends to make their bullets uh, a half a thousandth. Uh, almost a half a thousandth larger than uh, the specified diameter. So in other words, a 308 bullet will be 308 and a half, 243 bullet will be roughly 243 and a half, and so forth. Now if I take the expander rod or button, I should be able to find that its thickest dimension uh, corresponds to that minus a thousandth, and there it is. So there's your 242. So it's exactly one thousandth of an inch smaller than the uh, bullet. That one thousandth of an inch is, is uh, the, sufficient to uh, tightly grip a bullet. Now you notice that on this on this expander, this is this is the decapping pin or depriming pin. The term decapping uh, goes back to uh, muzzle loading days, back to uh, the Civil War era when. Uh, percussion caps were inserted over a nipple and percussion caps uh, were basically a, a, a crimped foil. Um, they, were, they were not unlike a, uh, um, 
a candy a candy cup, just a paper candy cup made of foil, and it was over tin foil that was over the nipple, and so that's where you derive the term uh, cap. And inside that was a uh, percussion sensitive uh, explosive compound. But so what we're doing is we're decapping um, we're decapping a, a used uh, case. So the decapping pin goes down inside during the sizing process and it pushes out the uh, old primer. Now the order that it accomplishes this is essentially always the same. As the case enters, as the, case enters the die, the first thing that happens is it, it, the uh, decapping pin encounters the old primer and pops it out. As the case continues further up inside the die, now it encounters resistance and sizes the entire body of the die down and, and sizes the neck smaller than necessary dimension, as I told you. And then as it's withdrawn, the uh, expander the expander will uh, size the inside of the uh, case mouth to exactly uh, the right dimension. So that's the end of the work for the um, full length, what's called the full length sizing die. Now, I want to just jump ahead a little bit here. Uh, a common problem that occurs, and it will happen with anybody who's loading at one time or another in their life, um, if you load enough, you're going to get a case stuck. You're going to forget to put some lube on a, bowl, uh, on a case, uh, and it's going to get stuck. Uh, and, and cases will not get stuck if they have uh, lubrication on uh, the case. But it's, it, it's, an invari it's, it's invariably going to happen. Um, Lee's system is entirely different than others, and that, and, which is a really nice thing in this case. Um, most, most dies, most full-length resizing dies, the center pin is threaded. And the, the, you notice that this center pin uh, is, is smooth, it's got a smooth shaft, there's no, there's no threads on it. This, this actually has the same, di the same diameter up and down here, and it slides inside a collet. Um, and that, that collet, this, this thread right here is a tapered thread with a, uh, it's, a it's, it's like a, it, it's like the, the collet that's on a bicycle uh, handlebar stem. This is a split nut and as it's tightened in, it closes down and secures this uh, shaft. But the shaft is always allowed, the, the shaft may always if it encounters severe resistance, such as maybe a stone inside the case that didn't get found, it'll, it'll simply slide up and it will uh, forgive the mistake so that it doesn't snap the decapping pin. With, with other companies, they'll have, a, they'll have a collet at this end of the uh, decapping pin so that you, you can replace uh, the, broken, the broken pins. That's not necessary with this because it's, it's simply not going to break. This, this is very forgiving. It'll slide up inside un, under extreme resistance and it will pr prevent uh, the damage to the uh, decapping pin. And should it ever break, uh, Lee will just simply replace it for you for nothing. Uh, they, have a, they have a stellar warranty and I've, I've experienced their uh, service. It's, it's a one-on-one -on -one service. Somebody, gonna, somebody answers the phone, there's probably a family member. Now, the other nice thing with that system is if you get a case that's stuck, with every other brand, uh, you have to, uh, you, you have to, when, when the case is stuck, the, the case without a primer is down inside here, fully engaged and stuck inside with tight friction inside the die. So with, with other cases, you have, to, you have to drill out this, the primer is not there, remember it's been decapped, but you have to drill out the primer pocket with a uh, quarter inch drill. You have to take a uh, tap and you have to uh, thread that uh, hole uh, with a, with a uh, quarter twenty uh, thread. After you thread it with a quarter twenty thread, then you have to mount you have to mount something on here to shim it and then uh, tighten a screw in and put a, basically put a machine screw in and tighten until it pulls the pulls the case up. Um, I've done it many times in the past helping people out and even doing it with my own uh, problem. Uh, with, this, with this die here, it's the simplest thing in the world. You just simply remove this nut. You just simply unscrew the nut 
and then give the give the pin a wrap with a uh, ball peen hammer and the, that that case will fly out just as easy as can be it's the simplest system in the world why anybody else hasn't thought of that is beyond me but see this is where engineers need to think outside the box if they're if they're constantly stuck in the same rut that they've been in for the last uh, 85 or 100 years they don't get very far but this is this is a very ingenious uh, design so you don't need to buy you know you, you you save a considerable amount of money you don't have to buy a um, shell holder because it comes with your set you don't have to buy an expensive uh, set of uh, basically uh, stuck case remover uh, to do this and you don't have to start learning how to thread uh, holes okay so I, the other one now is the bullet seating die you've you've resized the case uh, during the resizing process uh, at the end of the resizing process you uh, seed a new primer so now you go on to the point where you uh, dump powder into the case measured amount or um, a weighed amount either one and then you move on to a bullet seating die. That's all this die does is simply seats a bullet. Uh, there's a, there's a, in this particular one right here, again, they're not using, they're not using lock nuts or, or anything like that that you have to use wrenches on. Uh, it's, it's engaged with a, a very simple O-ring and this is aluminum. Now, <laughs> I've seen, I've seen people uh, complain that they blow the top out of this and everything is cheap metal because they blow the, the bullet seating stem out the top. I have no idea what they're trying to do that their bullet seating stem uh, is so, is so uh, uh, abused. But the bullet seating stem in this, in this particular case is very, very simple. It doesn't have to be threaded or anything. And it actually floats with inside the die. It floats in the top and it just sits in there. As the bullet is guided, it's guided up through that hole. You can see right there, there's a, there's a hole. That bullet will, I think you can see the bullet down in there. That bullet is the same diameter as the hole. It fits in there nice, nice and smoothly. And that allows the bullet to be guided up into place without canting uh, to the side. Because one of the difficulties that occurs with many dies is that the bullet rides up in and it can, it can fall left and right. And when it's trying to be seated into the case mouth, it, it gets distorted. Um, it's only after, it's, after the bullet has been guided up into the central, center position that the bullet seating stem uh, is placed into the uh, ogive of the bullet and it's basically put, pressed into place. And it's limited by this simple cap right here. So to adjust a bullet seating die, uh, is just simply a matter of turning turning this thumb screw in order to uh, give you the correct overall length. Why don't they have a lock screw? Well, it's very simple because every time you have a lock screw with a nut on it, you have to get your tools out. You have to do you have to do some sort of uh, manual labor in order to uh, undo things and change it, screw it in, screw it out tighten it, always a problem. With this one here, uh, you just simply adjust it by turning it a little at a time until you get the right bullet seating depth. And that's nice because if you're, if you're the typical reloader, you're not going to be reloading the same uh, bullet weights and bullet styles all the time. You may not want to load, you may not want to load 100 grain Sierra 243 bullets all the time. You might want to change to a 75 grain uh, nozzler or, or a a spear or something like that with a different ogive and with a different point. They're going to have different seating depths in order to have the correct jump to the rifling. So making it easy is definitely uh, superior. As to the lock ring that's used on this system, this lock ring doesn't have, uh, it doesn't have any uh, screws inside that have a lead pellet underneath them with a machine set screw and they don't need it and it's, and it's better that they don't. What happens with those, what happens with those, that style lock ring, this is a fairly coarse thread um, and a coarse thread, the, the, the nut floats around, normally floats around on the thread up and down, there's a little tolerance and as you, as you screw it into the, uh, as you screw it into the press, and you tighten down the you tighten down the lock ring. Uh, there's 
there's a little bit of movement there and it tends to jam, it jams the uh, threads into the press and makes them very, very difficult to move. When you, when you go to turn the, the, lock, the lock nut, the lock nut is really not locking anything down because the, the thread is not jammed uh, into position correctly, it's jammed in an upward mode. This die works with it, you know, it's like judo, you know, go with it. This, this allows that, that natural jamming of the thread to occur, and it's therefore uh, assisted by this uh, rubber o-ring, this neoprene o-ring. So as the, as the die is threaded in, uh, it, it's not working, it's not working at, at cross purposes with some lock nut that really can't reach the bottom of the thread because the, the, the uh, because the lock ring is really not in a, in a neutral position. It's therefore, this, this now is allowed to just simply turn down on top of the uh, press and you can, you can keep these perfectly tight with simply your fingers. In other words, you screw the die in where you want, draw your lock ring down to meet the press and tighten it with your fingers. And if you really want to, if you really want to give it an additional oomph, you can simply take uh, a crescent wrench and just give it a little bit of a snug turn. But you do, you absolutely do not want to jam these into place. There's no need of that whatsoever. They'll never come undone. And when you undo them, you always undo them, not with the die body, because the die body has to be allowed to uh, move in conjunction with the lock ring. The lock nut has to be turned. When you when you turn the lock nut, it'll bring the whole die out, and then you can then you can simply spin the whole works out. And that that right there will not that will not turn of its own accord. So it's a it's a good system. If you are loading pistols, uh, there's an additional uh, die that you have to use. Pistols have revolvers. And pistols have an additional need. During the process of uh, resizing the case, the case usually is, remember, pistol cases are larger in diameter than, than the bore of a rifle in most cases. They're, they're uh, you know, might be 38, 9 millimeter, 44, 45, whatever they are. Um, those, those bullets are very big and bulky, and they tend not to, uh, they tend not to want to go back into a case that uh, just Easily at all. Therefore, they use what's called a um, they use what's called a, 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 a case belling or case expanding die. The case expanding die basically has a uh, it, it has a uh, object that goes into the die that's uh, larger than the bullet diameter and is somewhat tapered and it bells the it bells the case mouth out to accept uh, a new bullet. Lee also incorporates it along with uh, the powder charging uh, setup. So at the same time that you're you're expanding your case mouth, you can charge your powder either manually or you can use uh, one of their. Uh, you can use a double disc system uh, and simply drop it in mechanically or whatever you want to do. Uh, you can you can simply put a uh, funnel on top of this and pour the pour the powder in. This is nothing more than a. This is this this additional piece right here is nothing more than. A, uh, basically it's a piggyback device which allows me to put my uh, powder charging device up on top and cl with clearance on top of these other dies and you can stack you can stack these piggyback devices up as high as you want in case you want to get uh, additional clearance it has a sleeve inside and this sleeve uh, allows it to push down on push down or I should say this pushes up. Uh, this corresponds with the case. When this is the this is the uh, bullet, the case expanding section, which allows the bullet to enter into the case, and at the same time it's it's hollow, so that the powder can flow through it. And this, when it, when it encounters the case, it pushes up, and it and it pushes the mechanism which dumps the powder. So uh, I can use I can use a standard. The way it comes, the way it comes from the factory as standard, is with this, with this nut right here, and you can see that this this nut has a bevel inside, and that that little bevel right there, look at that, Isn't that neat.
So you can you can drop your powder charges in manually. You can you can weigh them on a scale if you want, or you can use your uh, yellow powder dipper, whatever you want to do, and then just simply dump dump your pan, your your pan that you use on your scale, whether it's a digital scale or whatever. You can just simply dump it in and then continue on with your semi-progressive loader. Uh, and if you if you're using those dies on a uh, full progressive machine, uh, it just simply goes around like a carousel. So that's it. Uh, this this whole this whole system is all integrated. It's all designed for uh, future expansion in mind. It doesn't cost you any more to um, it doesn't cost you any more to buy this stuff. Um, matter of fact, their products they made in America uh, and they they do a better job. Uh, you're paying your you're, you're paying American workers instead of Chinese workers, and uh, you're getting a better product in return. Uh, everything that they have is the highest quality. Uh, I don't know why so many people think that. Uh, I guess they figure that because Lee sells their stuff for thirty percent of uh, anybody else, they sell their they sell their dyes for a fraction. I mean, a small fraction of what other companies charge. So I guess that means that. You know, Archie Bunker said that in, in, that's how you can tell what's better in America, because it costs more. Well, that's a lot of bunk. Uh, these, these don't cost as much, and they do a better job. Um, okay, now I want to show you uh, another, two, another two dies, which are um, for the advanced loading system. And they don't necessarily mean that you're, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're, uh, you can't use them if you're a novice. This is, this is just simply to uh, give you a, a little bit greater accuracy. It also gives you the benefit of not having to uh, lubricate cases before you resize them because uh, they, they resize, it resizes only the neck of the case. No lubrication is required. The simple caveat is that you have to use it in the same rifle. The same cartridge cases in the same rifle. Uh, no, two, no two rifles have the same head space. And if, but if you're using, as, as in this case, this is for my wife's 243, and her 243 is naturally the only gun which is going to be firing these these uh, shells, and therefore we can use uh, the we can use what's called a collet sizing die. The collet sizing die is very simple, whereas the standard whereas the standard sizing die use lubricated cases, uh, which resizes the whole brass, basically swages the whole brass all over again back to factory dimensions. This case here allows the uh, this this die allows the case to retain the fired dimension after it's been fired in, in a particular rifle. It allows it to retain the fired dimension, uh, and the, the head space remains the same. And as I explained with that 50 BMG case uh, in the other video, everything is snug at this point. There's no there's no head space clearance from uh, the the bolt face to uh, the head space point, the datum the datum point or the rim or whatever it is. Everything is nice and snug. And especially with cases like uh, belted magnums, which always have a problem with regard to the front end stretching, people don't uh, people don't size their cases the way they ought to. What they do is they they simply run them into a full length sizing die, uh, and they prob in many cases the chambers are a little bit oversized uh, out bef in in front of uh, in front of the belt, and that allows that case to stretch beyond its norm and uh, begin and after a while it, it parts in the middle. Nothing is worse than having a case parting but when it's a belted magnum case with uh, six, you know 80 grains of powder in it it's really bad. Uh, it can do an awful lot of damage to a chamber and to your rifle. But if you're using the same if you're using the same ammunition in the same rifle and if you're not if you're using the same cases over and over again in the same rifle uh, you'll quadruple or more your case life because the cases are not stretching and then being resized, stretching and being resized, and then every third or fourth time having to trim brass because brass flows towards the front, and where it ends up is out at the front of the case where it has to be trimmed again. So you keep losing brass as you go along, and it keeps getting thinner and thinner and work hardened, uh, and it has to be uh, annealed and all those things. So, But this process here allows you to simply resize the case neck. Nothing but the case neck itself right here. And by resizing only the case neck uh, back to dimension, everything else stays static. It's a simple process. This is a patented die. Um, and it uses, it, it uses simply a, uh, there's a, there's a retention 
screw at the top. It's made of aluminum, and it's the right it's the right product to use. You don't need to use this. It's not it's not something I, I read someday where some guy blew the top of one of these out because he was uh, having some sort of problem. So he said it. He accused uh, the price of being cheap. Well, you know, anytime you anytime you see people blowing things out, uh, I just blow it off. Most people haven't got a clue what they're doing. Um, they don't bother reading the instructions. If you read the instructions, you'd understand how the die worked. Now, this this decapping pin and uh, this this sizing pin is totally different than the other one. Remember, the other one had a the other one had a taper, and the taper uh, engaged the neck and expanded it after the neck had been uh, oversized, after it had been reduced to a smaller dimension. In this particular case rather than being reduced to a smaller dimension and then being dragged back into position, back into shape to the correct size, this one sizes it to the correct size to begin with so it doesn't overwork the brass. So this should be, this should be just a little bit thinner and as you can see this says 241 and a half. Can you see that? 241 and a half. Uh, that's almost 242. That, that dimension right there is still the thousandth of an inch, the thousandth of an inch less than the uh, bullet diameter, which gives it the uh, necessary uh, friction on the uh, bullet. But it's the same uniform diameter, and that means that it simply slides into the it slides into the case, uh, into the case, and the after it's after it's inside and after it's decapped the. Uh, primer, the old primer, the collet that's inside is forced up. If you notice right here, it, it emerges from the bottom of the die. This presses against the shell holder on the uh, on the press, and as it presses up against it, it forces it forces a collet inside. There's a there's a spring finger collet. It forces that up into a tapered into a tapered sleeve and that tapered sleeve closes those fingers around the case mouth and down around the down around this mandrel. So everything is absolutely precision. But it's only acting upon it's only acting upon just the uh, just the case mouth. So if you want to have extremely precise uh, target grade ammunition, uh, that's the way to do it. And this takes a book uh, th this takes a page out of the book that um, Bench rest loaders have known for years. In other words, they they have always bench rest reloaders have always just sized uh, case necks so that uh, they could maintain the best accuracy. But this goes at one farther. The the old style Wilson uh, neck neck sizing dies simply were driven down, or you, they used a um, bottling press uh, to push the uh, die down on top of uh, a case. But it still it still forced a neck endwise into a into a die squeezing it down as it went along which puts stresses on the brass and it can distort the concentricity in other words it's it's putting downward stresses on this junction of the shoulder and it can destroy the concentricity that you achieved when you uh, expanded this case inside your rifle so you you at one, at one moment you had a perfectly expanded case to fit the rifle chamber perfectly and the next minute you're, you're forcing brass to do something it doesn't want to do uh, stressing it out and sometimes distorting it a couple of thousandths of an inch whereas in, in the case of the collet sizing it just simply gently manipulates it, squeezes it back around a mandrel with one nice uh, precision movement and that mandrel is absolutely, is absolutely precise and is perfectly round so that covers um, that covers all the um, that covers all the uh, sizing dies. The final die that I recommend that uh, that you consider, and it's not a it's not a must. Regular sizing dies have the option of uh, crimping a case by uh, pushing the case up far enough where the the case encounters the case mouth encounters a, a tapered section and it, it presses the uh, mouth of the case toward the bullet, in toward the bullet. 
The limitation is that it uh, requires a, a cantilevered bullet. You have to have a bullet with a uh, with a seating groove around that uh, around the shank of the bullet. Well, if you don't have if if you if you have like most of the bullets being made, there is no cantilever. In other words, that's that band. It looks like a belt around the the uh, bullet. If you have most uh, bullets on the market, you don't have a uh, groove. You cannot use one of those in a um, in a bullet that doesn't have a crimping groove because if you if you do it with a uh, case that has a, a bullet which has no crimping groove or called a cantilever, uh, you'll distort and crush your case. Uh, you can actually buckle the case and uh, it won't even chamber, but it certainly makes a mess of it. And in this case again, he uses the same he uses the same collet um, method. And collets are nothing new. You know, this is where this is where sometimes engineers get stuck in their head. They've been using collets uh, on the mechanism on the front of your bicycle handlebars uh, for a couple hundred years uh, to hold your bicycle handlebars in place. So, the idea of a uh, the idea of a rigid collet is nothing new, uh, but he simply used it to uh, good results in this particular die. This is a two part. This is a two part die that uses a uh, that uses a sleeve inside in a tapered in a tapered body and that that sleeve that simply uh, pushes up inside the die and engages a tapered uh, a tapered way and that closes down that closes down that call you can see there's four fingers there and they're separated by uh, they're probably separated by about that uh, ten thousandths uh, of an inch gap as those close they do the exact same type of crimp that a factory uh, that a factory machine die does, and that is to crimp the end rather than press the case up in, rather than sliding it up in and forcing it uh, to be closed uh, in a in a bullet that doesn't have a uh, crimping groove, uh, or maybe the crimping groove isn't where you want it to be. If you're using a Hornady bullet and the crimping gro groove isn't where you want it to be, it doesn't make any difference. This this die system will actually. Uh, just close the end of the case around the bullet and it will effectively uh, squeeze it into the bullet. And it does it in a very precise way. It doesn't distort the bullet in the least. Um, I've, used, I've, I've used this system on uh, target grade ammunition. To be very honest with you, uh, I think it, it does a wonderful job. Uh, it's only, the only complaint I would have is that after a while it might, it might work hard and the, it would certainly eventually work hard in the uh, mouth of the brass uh, to the point where it has to be annealed. But it takes, it takes a while to do that, but if you're a person who uses an auto loader, uh, that's, I don't do it with, with this sort of brass, this is going to be used in a bolt action 243. But if you're using an auto loader, which experiences a lot of um, movement, uh, where, where bullets can be driven back and forth uh, in, in the cycling action, it's a good thing to have a crimped uh, bullet. So it's a, it's, a, it's a wise investment, and I think that especially for hunting ammunition uh, that might be exposed to the weather and things like that, and extra jostling around just loading and unloading continuously, it's a good thing to have. So that's it. I'll see you in the next video. God bless.